This is Ms. Wiles, and in this video, we are looking at a couple of skills. Um, if you haven't read it, go ahead and pause and read it, and then we'll come back. The problem asks about the zeros of a function and the distance between those zeros. We have to find the zeros of the function, which are also known as the solutions, before we can find the distance. This will be our, our last thing, is to take those zeros that we find and find the distance between them. To find the distance between any two numbers, it's the same as finding the difference. And when we do that, we take the highest minus the lowest. So to find the solutions, when we have to work this out by hand, we need to factor the quadratic equation. And when we look at this quadratic equation, we should think it's a mess. It's a mess because it's not in standard form. It's not something that we can look at and we're like, okay, we're ready to go. So I'm going to write it over here so that we can take the steps that are necessary to clean this thing up so that we can actually factor it. And the first step in cleaning this thing up is noticing that you have parentheses and you have something outside of the parentheses, that means you need to do the distributive property on just that part. So the 11x squared is not affected by what we're getting ready to do, nor is the minus 5x. But this minus 2x has to be distributed and multiplied by that 2x and by that positive 1. And when we do that, we have negative 2 times 2, which is minus 4, and the x squared comes with it because x times x is x squared. And then we have negative 2x times 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and then the x comes with it. Once you get things like this, you notice that you have like terms and you need to combine them. So that's our next step. So when we're combining these like terms, we can rearrange the way that our terms look so that our like terms are grouped together. This is optional, but you can do 11x squared minus 4x squared here because they're alike. And then you can do minus 5x and minus 2x here because they're alike. There's nothing else to deal with, so when we combine these like terms, we have 11 minus 4x squared, which is 7x squared. And then we have minus 5x and minus 2x. And minus 5 and minus 2 is a minus 7x. At this point, we do have a quadratic equation. What we don't see that we're used to seeing is plus or minus some number out here. But that's okay. We still have a quadratic equation, and we have to look at what we have. Don't expect everything to always look the same. Look at what you have. You have a 7x squared and a minus 7x. So they have common factor. They have the greatest common factor between the two of them. You look at both of them. And what they have in common is the 7 and the x. They have that in common. When you factor that out by dividing each of the terms by 7x, what you have left is x minus 1. At this point, you have your equation factored. You've got the two factors of the equation. You have 7x and you have x minus 1. And now we're ready to do the zeros. The zeros are found when either one of the factors is equal to 0. So we set the 7x up to equal 0 or the x minus 1 to equal 0. Solving those two equations... The first one we divide by 7, and this factor is 0 when x is 0. The second one, we don't need those parentheses, and I didn't need to draw them there, but x minus 1 equals 0, add 1 to both sides, the minus 1 and the plus 1 cancel out, and x equals 1. In this case, don't look at your answer choices here on this one, but the distance between the zeros is the highest, 1 minus the lowest, 0, so the distance between the two zeros is 1. So we're going to add on another example here. Um, 
I'm going to pause the video and write the problem up here, and then we'll be back. Okay, this problem is, I'm gonna, we're going to work this problem out as if it were the same instructions on the last problem, where we find the distance between the zeros of the function. And as soon as we see the word zeros, we should be thinking this is going to end up being a quadratic equation. We see some things going on here, and this is not only a mess, but some might say it was a hot mess, and so we've got to really clean this thing up. And you usually clean things up by looking at it and saying, okay, what should be my first step? And your first step is to get rid of the parentheses, and you get rid of them by using what property? Distributive. The distributive property. So the only thing that's going to happen in this next step is the distributive property, and we're going to multiply this positive 10x times that x, and by that negative 1. And we're going to multiply this, yes, this negative 7x times that x, and by that 1, just to get rid of all the parentheses. So the minus 4 doesn't change. The next thing is going to change. It's going to be 10x times x, and that's 10x squared. Then it's 10x times minus 1, or negative 1, and that's minus 10x. Then we have to do the distributive property again. You've got the negative 7x, or what looked like the minus 7x, outside of parentheses. Multiply it by the x first, and it's minus 7x squared. And then multiply it by the plus 1, and it's minus 7x. And then the minus 10 does not change. Before we go on, let me change something. We're going to change this plus 1 so that this problem will work out. We're going to change that plus 1 to a minus 1. This is why we don't use pencil. Use something that will erase. When we change that plus 1 to a minus 1, the minus 7x squared doesn't change. But what happens to the minus 7x? It becomes a plus 7x. And that's going to make the rest of the problem work out okay. We have to make sure that it actually can be done. <coughs> when you combine like terms, because you know that you want your quadratic equation in standard form, start with the x squared. And so we have a 10x squared, and we have a minus 7x squared, giving us, for our x squared term, we will have 3x squared. Then go to the x term. When we look across the problem for the x terms, we have a minus 10x and a plus 7x. And when we combine those, we have minus 10 and plus 7. And I don't care what you have to do on your paper to make this work. If you have to do 10 minuses and 7 positives, whichever method you use, Every positive and every negative <coughs> will cancel each other out. Those pairs will cancel each other out. And if you do that, even if this takes a few minutes and you're crossing out those pairs, you will have what you have left. And since I made these negative and these positive, I have three negatives left over. So on paper, do something like that. Whatever it is that makes sense to you to make the problem work out. Then we have our number at the end. We have a minus 4 and a minus 10. And when we combine those two, we have a minus 14. But that's not what I wanted you to have. I wanted you to have a minus 6 so that this problem will work out. So let's change this and make it a positive 4. To be honest, I like the fact that we're having to change things like that because you see how it changes the problem. Now that I have positive 4 and minus 10, I can do the same thing with the x's and the o's. But positive 4 minus 10 leaves me with a minus 6. I have done everything, I've cleaned up the mess, and now it's time to factor. And I see 3x squared minus 3x minus 6. 
Should I check for greatest common factor first? Yes. Yes. Is there a greatest common factor? Yes. It's three. So I factor out the three, and I'm left with x squared minus one x minus two. X squared minus one x minus two. When we get to this point, what do we notice about the quadratic part of this equation? What about the leading coefficient? One. It's one. And when the leading coefficient is one, my problem just became a little bit easier for me to factor. I'm still using the same steps. Look for the two factors that if I multiply them, I get a, a times c, which is negative two. I want to get negative two, and I want, when I add them, I want to get negative one. So what two numbers can I multiply and get negative two and add them and get negative one? One and negative two. One and negative two is exactly right. <coughs> the only possibilities I had were either one and negative two or negative one and positive two. But one times negative two gives me the negative two that I'm looking for. And one plus negative two gives me the negative one that I'm looking for for the sum. So these, that one and that negative two, help me make the factors of this equation, which are three times x plus one and x minus two. Once you have your factors, then you find your zeros. Find your zeros by setting the parts, the factors of the function equal to zero. Three will never be equal to zero, so the three has nothing to do with it anymore. It's part of the factors, but it's not part of the zeros. But x plus one could be zero. When will x plus one be zero? When one <coughs> When x equals negative one. We find that by subtracting one from each side. Or just thinking through that very simple one step equation. When will x minus 2 equal 0? When x is positive 2. And you can do that by either adding the 2 to both sides or just thinking it out. What would x have to be? So these are the zeros, the negative 1 and the 2. Now we can find the distance. When we find the distance between two numbers, we take the highest minus the lowest. 2 minus negative 1. Think about it on the number line, too. You have a number line. One of these x's is at negative 1. The other x is at 2. How far is it from negative 1 to 2? And count it out. 0, 1, and 2. It goes 1, 2, 3. The answer is 3. The distance between the two points is 3. The distance between those two zeros is 3. If you don't want to think about the number line, then know your integer rules for adding and subtracting integers. 2 minus negative 1 changes to 2 plus 1, which is 3. Because minus a negative is adding. And that's all I have to say about that.